Okay, today we're going to be working on the upper control arm on my son's 74 or 73 Plymouth Duster here. Challenger's on the lift, got the transmission out because of a bad seal, but today again we're working to going to pop this out of here. First of all, that what we got to do is uh, of course get the car jacked up. Uh, we're going to release the shock up top to remove any stress off of that. And then of course we're going to have to get the nut off the bottom here uh, on the upper ball joint of course to get that out of there. What we're doing, we're going to replace the two bushings there uh, right in between, right underneath that bolt there that goes through the upper control arm. It's causing issues with getting the car aligned properly. So we're going to pop those out of there and get to that point I'll show you how to get those done. For those of you who have never, some of you have never done anything like this before, so in this case I've got uh, a cheater bar. I used another wrench to kind of fit inside the main wrench to get the thing out. There's a nut back in there, you know I've been on there since 1973 and I'm using that one. Once you start turning it'll just wedge up against the body so you can do this as a one-man show. But a uh, good way to get yourself some extra leverage. I highly caution you to make sure that you get that wrench on the nut. Get it on square. Be careful pulling down on this one so it doesn't come loose and end up giving you a, a knuckle buster. So, But that way you can use some extra leverage to get that thing loose. Uh, and any other nuts or bolts or something that are a little tighter than normal. Uh, also probably want to spray some WD or uh, something on there to loosen up. And that should help you get that thing loose. Okay, this is the back bolt that's out of there, okay, and it was in like so, and it rides inside the here, that's how they do the uh, alignment on it, there's a little cam bolt on there. Now that is either, I think those are actually welded in place, uh, those are actually in place on those, you can't be moved. Uh, on the opposite end though, as you can see, this bolt has uh, a flattened side. So on the inside of it, or the other side of the bolt, as you can see that goes on there and it has a flattened spot on it. Again, that's to change, I don't know what it is, camber, cast, whatever it is with the alignment. But uh, in order to get these bolts out here, you need to tap them free. Uh, you can't really turn them out because you're going to be going against, uh, again, until you get them tapped beyond this because that sets inside that. And then again, they, they adjust that to adjust the control arm here. So that needs to be tapped out to get it beyond there. And then uh, again, you'll want to put the nut on there if you plan on saving these. So when you tap on it with a hammer or whatever on this end, you're not boogering up the threads. So I'll put the nut on there a little bit so you can tap it free. And then once it's through, you know, you can easily use a pin or something to pop it out the other side to push it all the way out. But then this piece will be, of course, pop off the back side. So right now I need to just kind of tap on that one right there. As you can see, right in here that little this little cam piece on the other side is right here so we're going to tap that out get that little cam piece beyond that and then get this other one out now i've taken the cotter pin off the bottom and the nut off of this i'm hoping it's going to separate easily if not i'm going to, have to put the nut back on here here and i'm going to tap up on that and try and separate it if not i'm going to have to use my uh, pickle which is just essentially a fork get my fingers in there see it's a metal fork that goes up in between here uh, and the control arm right into here and tap it a few times to try and separate that hopefully not destroying my boot which is my brand new uh, upper ball joint that's in there so keep going okay control arms out a little bit more of a pain than expected. What I had to do, as you can see, I put a bottle jack underneath there. I jacked up the, the lower control arm or underneath there. Uh, essentially to take some of the pressure off, then I was able to get the, the ball joint on a little bit easier uh, on that part of it here. And then up here, of course, once I relieved that pressure off of the uh, control arm a little bit more by using the bottle jack down below I was able to really just almost hand pull that bolt out of the, out of the top right here which is pretty darn easy uh, now matter of cleanup and stuff like that uh, don't know if I'm going to put new shocks in right away probably should 
doesn't make a whole lot of difference an hour later. But uh, next comes uh, sandblasting and uh, then repainting this with probably chassis saver, which is impervious to uh, oil, grease, so on and so forth. And then of course press those infamous bushings out. Uh, as you can see there, they'll, they press out through the back side. That's actually pressed in there. And let me see if I can show you here. And the actual control arm itself, the metal comes up to right below this piece right here, this outer metal piece. Okay, so this portion here between here and this piece, that's actually uh, here on forward to that point is the actual control arm. And then you got a, this whole bushing is pressed inside that whole piece. I don't know if you can see the little bit of difference in the diameter between there and there to that and that, but that presses in. Kind of a chore to get that little bugger out. I did it in my 70 Challenger. Not an easy feat. So we'll get those pressed out, press in the new ones. Uh, of course, after I get it uh, sandblasted and coated and looking good. And again, we'll do some cleanup in here. We'll get the vacuum and stuff out and we'll clean up and loosen up a bunch of that dirt. Maybe even put a coat of paint on there. Like I say, um, don't like doing things twice, but we may do it on this because, you know, paint's uh, at some point going to come on this one too. So again, that will be a whole new disassembly at that point, probably. Uh, undetermined of how far or what extent we want to go to on on his at this point. We are control arms all sandblasted and repainted, birdied up. Uh, went ahead and got one of the bushings pressed in. And here's how I pressed them in. Pretty simple. I put a socket on the on the one side of it here, big enough to accommodate the opening. In other words, set it on the back side, it would just essentially go around and hit on the control arm here. If you don't have a press or go to a press or something, this is a pretty good size vise I've got here and a pretty good size socket. So then, like I say, you just kind of crank her down. I did put a little lube on the inside of the actual control arm so this would slide through a little bit easier because those are um, pretty difficult to get in. Clean off all the excess grease. Uh, of course before assembling in the car but essentially to get it out you do the opposite way you take this and you put it on this side of the bushing and you would essentially push the bushing out uh, into the socket on this side in other words if the socket was this socket was over here just move it out to the outside instead same thing you put it in the vise and you press it out don't bust your vise I mean if it's really difficult to get out uh, I would highly recommend just you know taking it to somebody who can press it out. Putting the new ones in though on the vise was pretty easy with a little lube in there and was able to press it in. So next is uh, reassemble. Tip, if, I mean if you're going to go ahead and put the new bushings in you certainly want to go ahead and get your uh, ball joints replaced while you have it apart. Now this I it's already done but there's a special socket for these. The, the threading on that's kind of goofy. It's not a press in. Uh, it's a really coarse thread on that uh, control arm ball joint, so you can get these on eBay. Uh, different manufacturers do sell them, but that's really the only way to get those bad boys off because they're kind of square, kind of a pain in the butt, very difficult to, to, to get in and break the old ones loose, so just be aware. But that's the particular tool. I think they're about 30 bucks or something on eBay or you know some of the tool manufacturers will have these. Another kind of important aspect about going through all the brain damage of doing stuff like this and replacing your control arms and things is, you know, I try and sandblast everything that needs to be sandblasted. These are the cam bolts that adjust your uh, uh, camber and whatever else is called the alignment guys do that. I'm just going to get it close uh, in order to get it in to get it aligned. But these bolts are special bolts. You can't use special ones. That particular washer, as you can see, is offset. There's a reason for it. The cast and camber, that's what it is. And the same with the washer on this side. It's essentially just to set it up uh, to get all the alignment correct. Uh, you can get new bolts like this. Again, this is an older car. We're rest doing the restoration on it. Whether it chooses to do the uh, the brain damage of going through a little extra, but this is going to be a show car, so we're getting everything painted up. You can also use something like chassis saver, which works real well, but you really got to protect the threads with something like that, or POR15 is another product that's out there. Anything that just protects metal. Uh, right now, this is just trim black paint used for dashes and all other kinds of things, but again, because it's a show car, I'm not 
particularly concerned about this particular bolt. It's going to get kind of get beat up when you put it back in a little bit anyhow. Again, more rust protection a little bit and just keep it looking good. Pieces that need to be done, the nuts and lock washers. Again, I'm just using a real inexpensive uh, uh, high volume, low pressure spray gun. You can get these all over the place. They're pretty darn cheap. Now I've got a, a filter on the bottom to get some of the air and stuff out of it. Any oils that might come through. This one has a pressure gauge on it, so uh, make sure you get the pressure correct. Anyhow, pretty simple gun. This is just a real cheapie, but it does surprisingly a good job. Do a little bit of reassembly here. Now I, uh, again, I think I showed this on the other side. I didn't film that assembly, but uh, my compressor is running in the background. But uh, Use a little bottle jack just to get that upper or the lower control arm jacked up, so I can get the the ball joint in a little bit easier in the top. I mean, you just need to jack that up because you're working against the shock and stuff in there. And see all that lovely debris up in there too. I'm trying to get that kind of scraped and cleaned out of there before I do reassembly. Again, like I said, I'm painting the bolts and stuff, but we're eventually going to yank fenders and do other stuff on this. Heck, we may even put it on a rotisserie and do the whole thing, but right now, again, just trying to get it somewhat drivable and movable and make it look good for my son's shows. And we'll continue on. Okay, uh, kind of balance the trouble light in there and stuff too. <laughs> Up in here you see the, the cam bolt on this side. Again, I need to check to see which side it's actually supposed to go on so it's come in. I think I took them out from this way, but it seems more logical that you'd be able to adjust the cast and camber from on the outside than the inside because this, like I say, is affixed to the bolt. It won't move. And as you can see here, these little pieces of metal that stick out here, the cam has to go inside of those. And essentially what it does when you turn this, it causes the control arm to either move in and out and up and down because this is actually in a slot back in here. Uh, this portion here is a slot in the car and I think there's a slot here in the back. You can actually, yeah, yeah, you might be able to kind of see it there slotted. So it can move forward and backward. Uh, to get the alignment correct. But anyhow, I'm going to double check that. But again, those need to go in through there. And of course, there's uh, another one on the back side, exactly the same. Uh, so that little uh, offset washer that I painted a few minutes ago goes on there. Uh, again, like I say, when I took these out, they were both going in the other way. It seems more logical that when you're doing alignment, you'd loosen that one up and mess with the fixed one here in order to spin a little bit easier for the alignment guy. But I'm going to verify that about done putting the uh, bowl joint nut on there. Make sure you look up the specifications for your particular make and model of vehicle and or the part that you're putting on and what the torque specifications are. Same with these up here. You don't want your front end to be falling off. Make sure your lock washers are in place and again make sure you torque these to the specifications of what either the manufacturer tells you uh, on the vehicle or the particular part you're putting on. Uh, this is my official disclaimer. Make sure you get your cotter pins in and stuff. Double check everything for tightness before you, uh, uh, you know, drive it. Make sure you're safe. Uh, again, like I said, this is the bottle jack I pumped up just to get it up a little higher so I didn't have to try and lift the thing against the, the pressure of the shock. And we're pretty much done here, so I'm going to let it down. And there we go. And we can pull that bad boy out of there. Again, use jack stands. I mean, that one looks kind of precariously sitting underneath there, but I just made sure it wasn't going to tilt to one side or anything, too. And then, of course, the, the floor jack. But brace your car up. Do what you need to do to block it up to keep, keep it safe. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it if it helped. If it, huh. Please like it if it was helpful. Yes, one more thing. Once you get it all put together and you get your wheels and stuff back on that, uh, You'll be able to look at it from the front. Try to get it as close as you possibly can. You'll be able to tell if the wheel's tilting in or out, uh, at least to get you to the alignment shop. That's it. Thanks. Okay, and one more little detail. Obvious I'm missing a lug bolt, and I already know that, or stud. Uh, typically what I do is if I know I need to do more work on a particular side of a car, like for instance I need to get a cotter key and stuff that i got to dig up, uh, I'm going to kind of set this up on the jack a little bit better before I finish. I leave some lug nuts off to let me know that I'm not done. So don't throw them all on there and forget. Thanks.